got the horse. Hello, racing fans, and welcome to another edition of Handicapper's Corner. I'm Mike Hedges, along with Drew Forster. We're going to go through the Sunday, September 9th, Derby Day. Derby it's Day. Be a lot of fun. Ten Great races. Day. Early post today, 12.50. Right. The first of ten yeah. races goes at 12.50. Yeah. Six stakes today. Six stakes today. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is the biggest day of racing in North America this day. Uh, we, 600,000. We're, we're the kings. We're the kings. 600,000 in purse money. We're giving away uh, more purse money today than any track in North America. Wood vine. <laughs> yeah, take that. <laughs> right? Belmont, all these guys. Uh, so obviously, uh, our biggest day of the year. Uh, Mario's back. Yeah. Uh, he's uh, named on a bunch of horses, a bunch of live horses today uh, in all those stakes. Uh, great day. We should have great weather for it. Yeah, it's going to be nice, beautiful. All systems go. It's going to be a, a, a racing strip. Great day, uh, yeah. Excellent Full derby. field in the derby. Yeah, really good derby. There's some, too, the futurities are good. Yeah, Each of the divisions, uh, we're going to crown some champions yep. likely uh, this afternoon. All six divisions, the two-year-old Phillies, two-year-old Colts, three-year-old Phillies, three-year-old Colts. Older, older Mares, Mares older, boys. older boys are yeah. in action in stakes races today. So... Uh, you want stakes action, you want high-profile yeah. high horses, you got it Your today. pick fours and whatnot, they're going to be play, paying a bunch, I have a feeling. Especially the futurities are pretty tough yeah. to figure out. They're going to be some wild cards in, in the mix. Uh, I guess we'll jump right into it. First race, uh, we've got some $4,000 conditional claimers. No more, it's a two going a mile and a sixteenth. Uh, I'm going to go to the four-horse Friar Tuck. Uh, he's a horse that, uh, he's, he's been running in some tougher races. Was in a non-three yeah. for 7,500 last time. Uh, didn't fire as great as I thought he would. He got a little far. He was quite far back early. Yeah. He's got to get back to those races, two, but two and three back when he's running against straight three-year-olds. Uh, and he was running well in those races, though. And I think there's going to be a pace in here. I see Gentleman Ben going. I see the six excess dividend. Uh, the nine silent flame. There should be a good enough pace in here to help out the four Friar Tuck. He will likely be the favorite. Uh, he's got a you know a well-known jock in the saddle and yeah. uh, uh, just, just might be over bet. So maybe the value will be with my second selection, the five horse, no more drama, who uh, had a trouble. Has had two troubled runs in a row and uh, has, has had excuses. This horse is better than. Uh, his form shows. Maybe give him a look. He might like this mile on a 16th trip. I'm not totally sold whether he can go long, but I just know this horse is better than his form indicates. This horse has had serious trouble. The rail, he was just yeah. he, two back. He had the rail and was just uh, lost position. Last time uh, he, he missed the break, was, was bounced around, and, and once again lacked position. Hopefully uh, this afternoon he gets into a good spot because I think he will be a nice price. Marlo Dunry rides for John Snow and the six horse excess dividend. Another horse that figures in here. Yeah, I put him in for absolutely. third, but I went four, five, and six. I agree with you on Friar Tuck. Uh, I like too what you said. He has been getting too far out of it. I have a feeling Mario's going to keep him more, a uh, little bit involved in the yeah. race if he can be, you know, even two, three, maybe even four out of it. Uh, he just to. And they set him up a little bit, something to fire at. I think he's the best horse in the race. Uh, the second horse, uh, I picked number one, Ton of Pride. This is a horse that, uh, when he was at this level, was right there. For, uh, the last, right. for Fernando Perez was on him. Last time he rode him, only got beat a length by Halo's Quest, who's a solid horse at this level. Uh, then Harold jumped up to 15 for three-year-olds. Uh, that was a bit too much for him. Dropped him back in last time for the four and on two. Just gets beat a couple lengths by uh, Macho Quito. So uh, I think he's in the mix here, uh, the one ton of pride. And the third horse, uh, excess dividend, yeah. same third horse as you. Uh, he figures uh, to be in the mix in here. Four, one, and six. Burmy, on to the Stakes second. Stakes action already. Boom, boom, we get right into it, right in the second race. The SW Randall, uh, $50,000 uh, stake for older boys, going a mile and an eighth. And going a mile and an eighth, I like St. Liam's Halo. Uh, the Mount Rainier was a huge race for him. He got in a lot of trouble, yeah. uh, got, kind of got trapped down. Uh, it took Mario a while to get out. When Mario got out, he was flying. Like, he was really unlucky to lose that day and ran a bang-up race in the mile, which is obviously a lot tougher than this race. Uh, Commander's also a very tough horse. Mario elects to go with St. Liam. That's... Uh, I'll take that nod, you know, right. that, that they, they, he thinks he's a better horse. I have Commander in second. Probably a tough pick. Commander's just been uh, blowing him away in Edmonton, just absolutely galloping away from the competition. But the uh, competition in Edmonton, not quite as stiff as what St. Liam's Halo has been facing. And in third spot, I put Crew Leader, uh, a horse who uh, has always been tough in our older boy stakes, has lost a little bit of a step this year. Uh, came back with a couple uh, nice uh, wins and allowance races, those optional 40s. I think he's the best of the rest. Five, one, and three for me. 
Uh, jump up and kiss me in three wood round into the field. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. They, they, either of those are liable to get up for third for sure, but I, I'd say Sailing and Sailing Commando is probably your exact. Yeah, I, I didn't put Commander in the top three. I probably should be slapped for doing that, but uh, I just think the rail is going to be. I'm not slapped. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll take but, it easy but, on you. <laughs> but Commander, I'm just a little worried about the inside. He's, he's been running in Edmonton, okay? Yeah. I know they're, not, they're, they're okay horses. Mm -hmm. He's been. You know, he's just been trotting around the track with his ears pricked, and uh, but he's not faced. He's been making it look like pretty this. easy, yeah. He's he's winless at Hastings in his career, yeah. Uh, and just you know, you gotta the price won't be great on him. I, I I'm just a little you know concerned. I love St. Liam's Halo. I think he's the best horse in yeah. the race. Uh, he's he's another one that uh, you know he's run big races here. He's pace. Uh, I think he's better leaving the gate than Commander. Yeah. And uh, he's probably going to get a lead in here and. Uh, you know, he said, as you mentioned, he had Beat two trouble trips. Yeah. He had two trouble trips in Emerald, yeah. and uh, he ran into Taylor Said in all of his prior races. There's no Taylor Said in here, so I think St. Liam Hill is the best. Crew leader is streaking. He's going in the right direction. Yeah. He's had back-to-back -back wins. Uh, did it a little easier last time defeating Three Wood, but uh, I know the competition's tougher. But he's a horse that, on his best day, is a very, very nice horse. And uh, with the pace scenario likely being favorable, I think you would likely let St. Liam's Halo go. Might sit the trip in second, and I think the pace scenario will be quite kind, and he can stay for second. I put the two horse jump up and kiss me in for third. Uh, I thought this horse ran great in the Long Acres Mile. He did and, run a big race. Uh, ran a good Acres third. Mile, yeah. Taylor said, and Tommy Danzig. I just, yeah. I just, I just I, I, he's just a hard trying horse that shows up all the time. Big and, fan uh, of the show, uh, Wayne Oliver. Yes, good he friend is. of the show. He, he's always uh, frequents the Derby and. But uh, Commander, I'd like to see him get in there, yeah. Yeah, uh, but Commander, uh, it was a tough to take, leave him. You know, I'm, I'm saying to myself, I'm picking five, three, two. I'm leaving Commander off the ticket, and I, and I get, well, yeah, he's been dominating, but he's just been dominating the Edmonton Old yeah, Horse Division, and this is a lot tougher. Yeah. So I went five, three, and two, and probably Commander will win by five links. <laughs> uh, well. On to the third race, uh, four thousand dollar non winners to two, going six and a half furlongs. I've landed on the five horse Hampton Court, pretty easy win yeah. uh, at the maiden three thousand level. This race has not come up tough at all, uh, not even, not even, barely a little tougher than his maiden score. Yeah. Uh, he, there's no pace in here. I think he's going to get to control things again, Mario. He would likely draw off and win again. So I, I think he's he's the horse. I put the four horse uh, Shingen Bolt in for second. Uh, tough trip last time. I'm willing to forgive him for that. He moves into a better post. I think he'll get a, some value perhaps on the four horse Shingen Bolt if he can get into the uh, top two placings. Could really enhance the exactor payoff. And I put the nine horse Fat Cat Diplomat. Another one had a tough trip. Uh, clipped yeah. heels at the five eights bowl. There was quite a wild. Uh, episode going into the first turn, so uh, I definitely want to follow him back as well. So I think those are the two horses that are the biggest danger to Hampton Court, the four and the nine. But I did go five, four, and nine. I definitely like Hampton Court big time. I took a flyer here. I took Rossino on top. This is a horse that, uh, since he switched to Harold Barry's barn, uh, Harold's had high hopes for him. He obviously likes the horse, and he's running in some tough races. He's been running those handicap Marathons. races, running the marathons, running against tough horses. Now he cuts back to a uh, six and a half race, which I think uh, I kind of like the angle, right? He's been running really long. Now he cuts back to a sprint. Maybe Amadeo that's Ferrand what this horse wants over. to do. Maybe that's what this horse. Maybe I, he's not a marathon. Uh, yeah, I think maybe that's what he wants to do. A sprint. So I, and he gets lean rider Amadeo Perez. I'll take a shot on him. Uh, I do have Hampton Court in the second. He's going to be like if they were. He is the horse to beat. Yeah, but I'm trying to beat him with uh, Racino. And uh, third spot, I put Brave Star. Horse has only run four times, uh, two wins in a second. Uh, Pedro Alvarado sticks uh, board for Greg Tracy. They're always dangerous together, so threw him in the third spot. Eight, five, and 11 for me. And on to the fourth, the uh, Jack Diamond Futurity, the two year olds for 100,000, the boys' end. And uh, I've gone to. Uh, Speaking of, uh, Greg Trace and Pedro Alvarado teaming up for the probably likely heavy favorite in here, Proud Victor. Yeah. Uh, it's just been lights out since, uh, well, even before uh, the day that uh, Greg Tracy uh, claimed him. He set a track record Jeez. that day. Came back, uh, win uh, the next take, the, Bruce, the nursery on uh, BC Cup Day by a couple pretty comfortably. Although the horse he beat step up was a uh, lightly raced. That was only his second start uh, and made a big improvement. He's a nice horse. I have him in second spot. Wouldn't surprise me to see him turn the tables on Proud Victor today. And in third spot, I uh, threw in uh, Go for Guinness. Got a nice buyer the other day, a 44 buyer. Uh, ran third, just got nose to the wire for second. Uh, went really quick that day. His last two races, he's gone in 45 and changed, just kind of running off. Mm -hmm. uh, Forrester removes the blinkers. Maybe that'll get him to relax and get him to finish a little stronger. Maybe he can hang in there for third. 
but uh, pretty wide open event. I went eight five and two. Yeah, I like the eight crowd vector. Yeah. I think he's he's the boss. That seventeen and two race on BC Cup day in the nursery was super too impressive. Too much, yeah. Uh, he was hooked by a horse called Major Dundee. Put him away. Uh, was drawing. Was going well at the end. Uh, you know, step up past horses to get second. But the, this horse was still traveling well. Proud Victor. And I don't see anyone to go with him in here. I don't know if Go for Guinness. Maybe with the blinkers off, will even be going with Proud Victor. So uh, I just think he gets an easy lead. Beat He's him to cash be for very sure. Very yeah. dangerous. So Proud Victor for me. I uh, put the five horse step up in for second, as you mentioned. A rapidly improving horse. He's uh, been asked to do a lot. Uh, by running in the stake race in the second race of his career, but he was up to it. He was a yeah. good closing second and uh, ran a big race, and uh, he's come back to work well. A minute, yeah. Change, minute yeah, flat. Yeah, that was a nice uh, work the other day. Yeah, Amadeo was on him. He's a nice really call. Yeah. It'll uh, be interesting to see how he does, but uh, he needs to step forward. He still needs to move forward. He needs to quite step a bit. up. Yeah, step up. You're right. <laughs> well said. And uh, he needs to. To, you know, his numbers need to get a little higher to, to, yeah. to battle with Proud Victor. And I put the one horse, Stormy, for, for Becca. I'm not going to give up on her, him after yeah, one race. I have no idea what happened. Wild this horse pulled up going day, in the first know, turn. Yeah. I thought some tack broke. I thought his pedal, I lost the pedal or something. It, it wasn't that. Amadeo ended up getting off the horse. Uh, yeah. It was just a mess. Just throw that one out. Ignore that one. He was a favorite that day, too. Yeah, so. he was 2-5 to five or 3-5 to yeah. five or something. And then come back and worked after that in 59-3. Gets Richard Hamill yeah. today, and uh, I just don't want to give up on, on him. I, that, I love, love that horse after his first race. He, he, he looked he like was a pro. Full yeah. run, and then to watch him pull up going into the first turn was a real head scratcher, and I, and uh, you know, left you wondering. Seems to have come happened. back okay and worked fine. So yeah, yeah. all and, systems uh, go. So, so I'm gonna go eight five and one. Uh, definitely, definitely Storm and Rebecca can. This probably might be the one that can beat Proud Victor yeah. on, on, on the square because that horse showed a lot of ability in his debut. But I did go eight, five, and one. On to the fifth race. So we got the BC Oaks here, hundred thousand dollars. Top three-year-old fillies in the Northwest, going a mile and an eighth. And uh, I went to the six, Evelyn Stancer. Uh, not really a, a tough pick. This horse has continued to dominate her three-year-old yeah. rivals. Uh, we do have some newcomers coming in from Seattle and from Edmonton, but. I'm just not too sure if they're good enough to defeat Evelyn's dancer anyway. So uh, I'm going to go to the daughter of uh, Song and a Prayer. I think she's going to be tough to beat. Mary Gutierrez rides up at the three-horse Madeira Park, who uh, crushed her rivals in the Sonoma in Edmonton. Uh, but even her races here at Hastings behind Evelyn's dancer weren't all that bad. Mm -hmm. And she's, I think, gotten better and uh, perhaps might be a, a tougher foe for uh, mm -hmm. Evelyn's dancer. So I've got her in the second spot. I put Racing for Gold in for third. I thought she was compromised by slow fractions last time uh, made a bit of a wide move and uh, you know danced the wind got up the inside and beat her for second but I think she's the better horse of those two and uh, I put her in for third I, w I went six three and seven I'm going with the local horses I agree with you I think it's a two horse race between Evelyn's Dancer and Madeira Park I, I put Evelyn's Dancer on top I think she's a better filly mm -hmm. but I think Madeira Park might be a little bit better the distance that might be the one thing that yep. maybe she could get ahead of her I don't know if uh, I Evelyn's answer is just too good maybe to overcome, but going a mile and an eighth is the one chance Madeira Park, I think, has to beat her. Uh, so I put Evelyn's answer on top. Madeira Park in second. I couldn't decide between Race for Gold or Dance the Wind in for third. It was kind of a coin toss. I had Race for Gold. I ended up putting Dance the Wind. She's done a little wrong this year. You know, she always runs tough. A few seconds. She, she went one early on, and then she's just kind of been picking up the pieces here and there. But she's a pretty nice filly, too, for uh, Carl Lawson. So six, three, and one for me. On to the sixth, the uh, Maiden 3000, Phillies and Mares. And I've gone to the two, Lookout County. Uh, horse uh, out of the Terry Clyde Barn, been off a while. Ran second to uh, Maurice Glory last time. And Maurice Glory was uh, dropping way down, yeah. much the best of the race, one by eight. Uh, Lookout County ran second, was ahead in the Tacadale Soul. They give her a couple months off, a little freshener, probably out at the Clyde Farm there, bring her back in, put her in for 3000. Richard Hamill takes a call. I like a lot of things about her. Uh, put her on top. Uh, in the second spot, I put the nine, Stolen. Uh, lightly raced filly uh, for a very capable uh, Tracy McCarthy. Uh, first time got beat about ten lengths for five. Running back for maiden three, just gets beat a couple. You know, going the right way, right. definitely improving. I could see her even winning it. Put her in the second spot. And uh, in the third, I put uh, the 11 uh, for Barb Heads, Downhill Daisy. Barb thought enough for ran it for ten in the first two starts of uh, her career. Got beat four, five, six kind of lengths, kind of races. Ran it for five. Uh, got beat by 24. Just uh, not sure what happened that day. I'd throw that one out. Turned her out. Yeah. Come back, yeah. freshened up. Turned out, freshened up. Comes back in for three. Put it in third spot. 
not crazy about the post for her, the 11. No. That's not going to help her. But 2-9, uh, 11 for me. I, I, I like the 11 uh, downhill daisy as well. I've got her yeah. in for third, uh, as you mentioned. Uh, ran some decent races against some pretty good horses for maiden 10. So down here for three, perhaps, uh, is live. I, I've gone to the sixth, though. Finally, Sarah to win it. Yeah. Uh, I thought a pretty good fourth behind Nataloka and counterfeit LK. Uh, it wasn't the toughest of maiden $5,000 races, but I don't think this horse got the best of trips. I'm hoping Amadeo can get this horse near the lead. Uh, it was a little far back last time, and uh, you know I hope it doesn't go four or five wide like she did last time. So I like finally Sarah to win it. I put the two lookout county, as you mentioned, uh, definitely live in here, mm -hmm. and the 11 for third. I went 6, 2, and 11. Not a strong opinion on the race. I really couldn't get a good grasp of who was going, like the five's going to get the lead likely and a potential, but I'm not living and dying by the five and a potential in this race so it was and stolen i know she's likely going to get wagered on and mm -hmm. probably might not possess a lot of value but she looks like a distance filly to me and, and one that just one pace she's just kind of grinding it out in the stretch but mm -hmm. i didn't i didn't I, there was no wise guy horse in here i thought and i, I was really trying to find one. Maybe you yourself can find one in the paddock or something and look at these fillies uh, when they're on parade and everything. But uh, yeah, it was, I went 6, 2, and 11 in a very... If you I don't go to get a beer and a hot dog yeah, during the... Yeah, uh, it might be a pass. <laughs> <laughs> during the 6th race. On to the 7th race. Got some non-winners at 2 for 4,000. Going 6.5 panels. Uh, I'm going to the outside. All my horses are way on the outside. 9, 10, 11 in here. I got some got fillies in there. So I went to the 9, Silver Street. Uh, I, I thought a pretty good effort for 17.5 behind Clarice yeah. B and Flame a few. Uh, that was her first run off, a big layoff, showed some speed, and uh, flattened out late. But uh, I think she's going to get the lead in here, and I think she's get a little, she'll be even fitter uh, this afternoon. So I, I like Silver Street to win it. Put the 10 Exotic Light in for second. Seems like a perennial second or third place type horse looking for a fourth runner-up effort of the year, and I think she might get it. And the 11 horse, uh, Naughty Librarian, class drop for her last time. But that was going a mile on the 16th. Gets mm -hmm. back in, I think, at her better distance of six and a half furlongs. And I like Naughty Librarian maybe to catch a piece of it. Silver Street to me, though, looked, looked too good on paper. I really didn't see a whole lot out. I put the five, maybe perfect light in for fourth. Uh, affiliate that's had quite a bit of time. I haven't been seen her since May. Yeah. But a horse that could come running late. Tenzel, the, the Tensel, uh, the yeah. two horses, another one it's that okay, you yeah. might want to have a peek at. But once again, this is another race. I just 11 horses. I didn't get a strong feel for. But I, actually, I do have a strong feel for the nine. For Silver I don't Street, have a strong feel yeah. For anything else. In yeah, the race. exactly. Who do you, who do you put with her? This is a wide over. Leona's miss was sharp last time. This is yeah. a, a tough race for second, third, and fourth. I'm, I'm all over the horses. You, you were just talking about Silver Street. Is a, is a head and shoulders above these? It looks like it. These shoulders, like I, I think. The boss. She's definitely the horse to beat. Uh, Mario Gutierrez aboard. He's had a little luck with Flower Arrow this year, too. Yeah, a little bit, of, you know. Uh, I put Perfect Light, a horse you just mentioned. Uh, million yeah, it's okay. He's had a decent Flower year with Arrow. Flower Alley. I'll have another, by the way. Uh, Perfect Light, I put him for second. A horse uh, crushed first out, came back, uh, took a pretty aggressive jump up to 25. Was no match for those, but then gets turned out, shows back up here for four and on two. She fits nicely, fresh, leading rider Amadeo Perez. I put her in for second. And uh, third spot, I put to Leona's Miss, uh, one you mentioned, uh, yeah. Mark Luce's horse. Mark Luce's got two in here. Uh, Naughty Librarian, I think, is maybe going the wrong way. Leona's Miss seems to be improving, so I put her in for third. Uh, nine, five, and seven for me. Basically, key the nine to a pile of horses. Yeah, it's, yeah. Basically what we're saying. Nine all. In, in, in this uh, seventh race. And now back to a little bit more, uh, a little bit more uh, classy Delta. runners. Uh, the Delta Colleen. Uh, this is our stake uh, on the card for older fillies and mares. Uh, I'm going against what will probably be the favorite class included. I'm going to take Heidi Marie out of the Forrester Barn. Uh, she just seems to be getting better and better. Uh, since she's come up here from California, they, they've run her four times, she's won three. The day that she got beat here by Cage Mistress, Wanda Woman, overvalued in them, uh, she had a pretty rough trip. She was yeah. trapped down on the inside. Yeah, they're, they're slow, and she kept kind of getting tugged back. It wasn't the best of trips for her. Uh, but she's blossomed since then. Uh, she's running in Alberta. She beat Overvalued out there, then came back in a race where Overvalued wasn't there. Maybe running against weaker company, but she made no mistake, one by seven. Uh, it was a little bit different running style up near the lead. So Hamill uh, sticks with her. He can probably do what he likes with her, kind of put her where he wants. So I like Heidi Marie. Uh, the second spot I put, probably your favorite class included. Uh, she's just been a monster at Emerald this year. Uh, what is that, the last four or five times she's been beat once, uh, just crushing down cool, there. Man. So she's going to be awfully tough. And uh, in the third spot, I put the hard luck uh, story of the year, Terlani, 
who was uh, improving, just getting better and better, won a stake here, and then uh, in the morning, a freak accident. Uh, Your a, horse. A rider. Came, my horse, Epicurean, lost her rider. When running, uh, you know, near the wire, was running loose, running kind of blind, and ran into Terlani. She was pulling up after work. Hit her after pretty hard. Work yeah, after in, really uh, nice work. Back in, uh, it was, it's quite it was a, it's way, it was a while ago. It's not even on form. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it was back but, in June or July. Yeah, it was, would have been back near the end of June. Uh, so she's been off since then, this poor hard luck mare. A really nice mare. And uh, I put her in for third. Unfortunately, she loses all that time. Now she comes back and has to go right into a mile and eighth race. So it's not ideal for her, but she's really cool. So she could get a piece of it. I got three, six, and two. Yeah, I got the same three horses, but I, I'm going to go to class included on top. Yeah, uh, she's probably the She top looked one. great yeah. uh, winning here last year, winning the BC Oaks. Uh, she came back and ran a tough luck second to Orchid Silver in the Ballerina as well. So she's, she can adapt to Hastings. Yeah. Her, her, her season this year as, a, as an older mare. Obviously brilliant. She's only had the one blemish. She was second going six and a half furlongs behind Easy Kitty uh, going in 114 and change. So other than that, her season's been perfect and she's been yeah. crushing her opponents. And the one thing I'm, I, I, I do see what you're, you're saying about Heidi Maria. Uh, like She looks like the speed in here and she's set fast fractions in the uh, Edmonton Distaff, uh, which were, you know, the 46 and yeah. one, I believe. And, and it was, that track was dead. Yeah. And, and she's still running on great at the end. But still, this class included has got good gate speed, and, and, and you can put her anywhere in the race. So I just don't think she'll let Heidi Maria get away. Get away, yeah, and, exactly. And she may be the one that can run her down. And I, I just think this horse is, is she's a nice, nice filly. She and, sure is. And, and, uh, and she's, she's on her game. She's genuine. And, uh, and as you meant, yeah, she's on her game. She does pay the penalty for doing all the winning. She's got to pack a buck 23. Mm -hmm. We'll see if that stops her. But I, I like her. Heidi Maria, great form. She has been a, a great filly for the Benowitz. And uh, they, they've, uh, you know, great move sending her up from California to Dave, and uh, and and got a lot of, you know, a lot of run out of her. Had a lot stakes, of luck with her, yeah. Stakes winner now, and uh, a good filly that could uh, definitely win the Delta Colleen. And I put the two horse Trelawney, as you mentioned, uh, is a pretty salty mare that was on a roll and just had that incident, and it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's a long ways back for her. But uh, Birmingham opts to ride her over a PS Touchdown, who she want to stake, he who he want to stake on a BC yeah. Cup day, so uh, that that speaks volumes. Just, just well. unlucky she comes into a mile in the eighth race. Yeah, just a long time in yeah. between races and go nine furlongs. But uh, six and three look the best on paper. Put uh, Turlani in for third, six, three, two for me in the Delta Colleen. On to the, uh, the, on, on the, the day. big one. The uh, big British one of the Columbia year, yeah. Derby. Grade three event, uh, mile and an eight, $200,000. Got a full gate of 10 of them. We do have a three horse entry though, so there's only 10 betting interests. Course, and they the, are going to be a short price. They will likely be uh, odds on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Devil in Disguise, the one, Taylor's Deal, the 1A and the 1X is hoist. Those three horses look pretty dangerous pretty here. Pretty salty. I think they could obviously run 1, 2, 3 or yes, 1, could, 2, yeah. 4. I mean, they're, they're uh, head and shoulders, it looks like, above a lot of these horses. So I'm, I, I'm not going to try and beat them. Uh, the one horse that may be able to, to pull it off would be the five high end man on his best day with the right trip. I think he's won impressive with, with, race last with, time in the, in the trial. With, yeah, with unlimited potential. I mean, he's a nice yeah, colt. He sure he's is. only had six lifetime starts. He went just a few fifths off the track record in his last start while sitting off of slow fractions. Uh, they they really sprinted home the last uh, yeah. five sixteenths of that race, and uh, he's a. Uh, Big, beautiful horse. If you see him, you just go, oh, I want that horse. He's he like, is a high-end man. He is yes. perfect. Yeah. You look at him, he's like 16'2", or it looks like it's 16'1". Big, long back, beautiful, athletic-looking horse, and uh, certainly has all the potential in the world to be a superstar, and he is so yeah. far. But he is the one that I would be worried about if I was Mr. Todd and, and uh, with his three horses. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I put the six-horse Doug's buddy. I was really impressed with his run in the Canadian Derby. This horse was sent pretty hard by Stefan Heiler. Had to endure going a long 47 way, yeah. one. That track, that was the same day as Heidi Maria, Maria ran and yeah. a, a lot of the other stakes. And you'll see that these fractions were just as fast. And they had to go a mile and three-eighths. And they're er, you know, comparable. That, yeah. And this horse is fighting at the end like he hell. He was trying to hold off talkative. And he did hold off uh, Devil in Disguise down on the inside. But it was a, such a game effort. Uh, but he is coming it back was. in just two weeks. And it with, is a with, the, with the ship in between, yeah. And, and that was a hard race, and that's why I'm going to put him in the third spot. But there's a lot of horses to talk about in here. Second City, Peter Redekop's horse. He hasn't done much wrong, has he? He's got. He's all he does is win by a million lengths. Yeah. But he's never run far, and he hasn't been at a big track yet. He's been at Penn National and two times at, in Charlestown. Yeah. I believe he purchased the horse 
After his maiden win? After his, no, his, his non was a two win. Yeah. He, he, the horse ran on August 25th for Mr. Redekop. Yeah. And uh, that was the first time. And then he's been sent to Craig. And, uh, but still, a mile and an eighth still is in question. Having to ship class, you know, class issues with him, but he's a mm -hmm. son of distorted humor out of a slew city slew mare. So the pedigree is definitely there. So yeah. he's he's uh, amazing. Yeah, he's, and the two Seattle nice horses numbers. are interesting. Katar's Pearls, a maiden, uh, but a horse that's been running in Southern California. Uh, uh, Wilo Cat, he's been knocking at the door, hitting the triactor all the time in, yeah. in, in our Hastings races. It's a great, it's a really good race, but it really it looks like Glenn's horses are the best. They are going to be high end man yeah. is the one that I really like maybe to knock them off. So I went one, five, and six. We are totally cheating, too, just by taking the entry. So we don't even have to pick, have to pick between Taylor Steele, Hoist, and I like and Taylor Steele, and obviously Mario does as well. Looks like yeah. there's going to be a pile of speed in here. Yeah. It looks like the Gov, uh, Italian boy, uh, high-end man, Doug's buddy, Second City, Hoist. Uh, Al Capone. Pressure from the outside, yeah. Uh, Hoist, yeah. Th there's going to be a conge congested front end in here, and Taylor Steele should get the, uh, a very nice trip sitting off the leaders. Yeah. So I, I agree. I put the entry in, in for the first spot. Uh, I, I kind of took a flyer in, in the second third spot. I, I didn't have the local horses because I know that Taylor's deal uh, and Devil in Disguise can kind of handle those horses. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at horses maybe that could upset or get in there. But really, I think I'm picking, you know, I, I put the honorable one in the second spot. But because of the entry, I'm really putting him more to the third or fourth spot. Uh, but he's been pretty tough at uh, Seattle this year. Uh, just got beat a couple links in the last one uh, by Makers Finale, an Italian boy. Uh, got a nice kind of closing style for Blaine Wright, a very capable trainer. Fernando Perez rides up here. Fernando's having a good year. So I put the nine in kind of quote unquote second spot. And the other Seattle shipper, uh, Italian boy, uh, Tim McCann, a perennial leading trainer down there. He's not bringing him up here just uh, to take a gallop around her. He thinks he's got a shot to win it. What worries me is he's another uh, part pace of the pace works. scenario. Uh, William Ant and Georgie come up to ride here for Tim. So I put him in the Time third for back -to -back spot. Derbies. That, yeah, that's right. Yes, Derby. Ant and Georgie. Last year with Northern Causeway. For Kaz, that's right. So uh, one, nine, and three for me, but it's more like one, 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 one nine, nine, three. three. <laughs> and on to the last, the Sadie Diamond Another Fraternity. Hundred grander. Another hundred grander to close Another out the vehicle. nightcap. Uh, this one for the girls. Uh, interesting race. There's, you, you know, you can make a case for a lot of horses in here. Um, I ended up uh, kind of taking a flyer on the 10 horse. Uh, Willamette. Yeah. for Dino Condolinio. So uh, Mario Gutierrez takes over. Frank Fuentes goes to Tempered Steel. Uh, nice filly that he just won the sales stake on for. Um, but Willamette was also right there, you know, on BC Cup Day. Seems to be improving. And uh, getting Mario is... Uh, never a bad thing. Never a bad thing. I think maybe he can move the horse up a little bit. Maybe he pushes her over the edge. Uh, I put Tempered Steel, the horse I just mentioned, for uh, Spot O'Connell in second. She's... Uh, Definitely for real. Uh, I missed the race the day when she went down, or, yeah. or lost her yeah. rider, I should she say. She was going to be taught. Everybody tells three. me, yeah. I, I knew that she was live because everybody yeah. was talking about it, how she looked like she was probably going to win that day over Storming for Becca. Comes back, makes no mistake in the sales stakes, wins. And uh, I took the horse uh, that finished just behind her. I want to dust her in for third. So uh, 10, 5, 9. Uh, in a pretty, you know, Little Miss Bean, you can make a case for Curie's Gal. There's definitely some other nice horses in here, but I, after much deliberation, ended up 10, 5, and 9. Well, I'm going to make a big, strong case for the one horse, Little Miss Bean. Uh, yeah. Very impressed with her. She won her maiden. Okay, maiden 20. Uh, nothing flashy about it. 39 and 4. It was an okay time. Came back to run a good fourth against Market Way in 10.30. 10.30 is a stake winner. Market Way is a stake winner. And uh, just got folded out of third by uh, a Lady Henrietta. But it was a good effort nonetheless and was... Really shy and intimidated down on the inside. Came back a month later, ran a very good second to Bamboo Dream on BC Cup Day in the debutante. Uh, showed me a lot that day. She's come back to work brilliantly twice, a minute and, well, actually th three times, but especially yeah. the last two. two you got two year old fillies working in a minute, two times in a row. That number one shows they can run. Number two shows they're coming back well. When you can yeah, come back after a minute right, one yeah. fifth, and that's a big key with two year olds at this time of year, is how they're doing it soundness wise. They can get a little shin ailments and you got to kind of back off on them a little and cool the shin out and sometimes it interrupts your training a little you can keep pressing on with them but it looks like she's like has none of that and she's uh, going well i like the one little miss bean i think she's versatile enough to be close to the lead and uh i think she'll be awfully tough to beat I'll, I'll, i really like her i put the five tempered steel in for second as you mentioned uh, a nice win in the sales state a little green in that race again but uh didn't get motoring once she got her nose pointed to, into daylight on uh, 
on the, in the stretch, she you know she leveled off and, and ran well towards the wire and won quite comfortably. wasn't the toughest of sales stakes, but still it was she a good race. She's moving yeah. forward, and uh, th th that's a good sign. And I put the ten Willamette in for third, uh, as you mentioned, good third. Uh, finished behind Little Miss Bean, but uh, a rider change uh, as Frank opts for the the five horse tempered steel. But a horse that might get the lead in here, like Willamette's mm -hmm. got a little bit of speed. As you, you see, two starts back, she had the nine hole, was sitting second to Bamboo Dream, and ran it. Just got photoed out of that race, and uh, Bamboo Dream came out to win a couple of stakes. So. Uh, or a stake race, so yeah. you know she got beat by a pretty good filly that day. Cause there's not a pile of speed in here. Looks like the three Kiri's gal, maybe the four Honey Skila. Other than that, there's not a pile of speed. So if Willamette can kind of get over, uh, she could be dangerous. Uh, but I do like the one, uh, a little Miss Fina with one, attack, yeah. five and ten. Well, that'll do it for our selections for the Sunday, uh, Saturday, BC Derby Day uh, card. And uh, up next on screen will be our selections for the entire program. A quick recap here for you. Back in race number one, I'm going to go with the four horse Friar Tuck. I went four, five, and six. Race two, the first of our six stakes races. I went to the five, St. Liam's Halo. I went five, three, and two. Third race, I went to the five, Hampton Court. Favorite, but should likely get the job done. Five, four, and nine. In the fourth race, I went to the eight, Proud Victor in the uh, Jack Diamond Futurity. Former uh, owner of Hastings Race Course, Jack Diamond. Went eight, five, and one. Fifth race, went to the six, Evelyn Stancer. I went six, seven, six, three, seven. That's the BC Oaks. In the sixth race, went to the six, finally, Sarah. I went six, two, and 11. In the seventh race, went to the nine, or Silver Street, nine, 10, and 11. And the eighth race, the Delta Colleen. I went to the six, uh, class included the Washington Invader, winner of the BC Oaks last year. Went six, three, and two. In the ninth race, the BC Derby, I went to the the uh, number one entry, the Toy Taylor team entry, I went 1, 5, and 6. And in the 10th and final, I went 1, 5, and 10. And on to my picks. For uh, I, I don't think me and Mike have had as similar picks all year as this weekend. We have a lot of the same horses. I agree in the first race, number four, well, Friar right? Tuck. Yeah, well, it's, we're on the same wavelength. Uh, first race, I went with the four, Friar Tuck over the one and six. Uh, second race, same as Mike, I got the five, St. Liam's Halo over the one and the three. In the third, I took a little bit of a long shot, the eight, Rossino, over the five and 11. In the fourth, I went with the favorite proud, Victor, over the five and the two. In the fifth race, again, agreeing with Mike, I went with the six, Evelyn Stancer. She's done little wrong this year over the three and the one. In the sixth race, I went with the two, Lookout County, over the nine and 11. In the seventh, the, your likely favorite again, Mario Gutierrez on number nine, Silver Street, over the five and seven. In the eighth, I took a little bit of a shot on number three, Heidi Maria with Richard Hamill over the six and the two. In the ninth, the BC Derby, I went with the entry, the Troy Taylor entry of Devil in Disguise, St. Lee, or... Hoist and Hoist Taylor. and Taylor Steele. There's so many of them, I'm getting them confused. I went with that entry over the nine and three. And in the last, I went with the Dino Condolino's train, number 10, Willamette over the five and the nine. Well, thanks everyone for joining us here on the Derby Day edition of Handicapper's Corner. Uh, once again, if you can't make it out to... Uh, to Hastings Racecourse on Derby Day. Come right here to the Derby Barn Grill at 176 and Zero Avenue. Lots of great be, seating, excellent TV. It's going to be packed in here, a lot yeah, of great atmosphere. It will be featured prominently here. Yes, it will be on the big television screens. Yeah. And uh, but don't forget, uh, as of this taping, uh, don't forget Mario Bobblehead Day on the Saturday. Saturday. Uh, don't forget first thousand people, people get the get bobblehead. Program, buy a program, buy a program get, get, get a bobblehead. Head. You need a program anyways. So you just yes, get you a do. bobblehead. It's easy. <laughs> All right, on behalf of Drew, I've been Mike. Uh, thanks for joining us here on Handicappers Corner. We'll see you next time. Uh, good luck on a great, what should be a great weekend yeah. of thoroughbred horse racing. He wins it by a half. Back to this here in the telegraph. For a fair fight, I hear his foot's all right. Of course, it all depends if he read last night. I know it's Valentine's. The mic's works look fine. You know the jockeys, brothers, a friend of mine. And just a minute, boys, I got...